He's America working God. He's America working God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is America working God. All right. Morning, church family. And as we get together for Resurrection Sunday, it's important that we stop and look and think about what Jesus did for us. What happened? Think about this. Three thieves, Barabbas and two others, were due to be executed by crucifixion. Then Jesus came onto the scene and everything changed. Pilate could not find fault with Jesus. His wife had been having torturous dreams concerning Jesus. I believe this was all the devil trying to stop the crucifixion of Jesus. Then Pilate tried to let Jesus go by offering to let the crowd choose between Jesus and a murderous Barabbas. Out of hate and blindness, the crowd chose Barabbas. Jesus took the cross of Barabbas. Jesus, perfect and innocent, was the substitute for Barabbas. Barabbas was guilty, but set free. Because of Jesus, we're all a Barabbas. Because of Jesus, we're all a Barabbas. Barabbas was set free from his punishment because Jesus took his place. Barabbas, whatever he did with his second chance, we may never know this side of heaven. But what's important is what you do with your chance. Jesus paid for your sins on the cross. Your response can be like one of these other two thieves. The first one heckled at Jesus and said, if you're the son of God, save yourself and us. This thief had no reverence for God, no faith. And he said, if, in hopes that if Jesus would try to prove it to him that he was who he said he was, he might save him. But the second thief said, don't you have fear of God? We're all guilty. Jesus is innocent. We're justly paying our punishment. He looked at Jesus and said, when you enter your kingdom, please remember me. This thief accepted that he was a sinner. He believed that Jesus was who he said he was. And he humbly asked to be remembered. Jesus responded, Today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus forgave him based on a heart of repentance. Jesus paid the price. Stop and think about this. This man was saved by grace. This thief was not, did not, have time to be baptized. And Jesus didn't say, you're going to be with me in some purgatory or you're going to be asleep until judgment. No, he said, you're going to be with me in paradise today. with the Father today, not in three days. Think about this. Jesus told in the upper room discourse where he was going in John 14. He said, I am going to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would not have told you said, you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said, no, I don't. How do we get there? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man may enter the Father's kingdom except through me. Jesus went to prepare a place. That thief got to be there in heaven with him and the Father. That day, his forgiveness was paid for by Jesus. Our forgiveness that day was paid for by Jesus. That's why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. 
He put that love into action. He didn't just say, I love you, I love you, I love you. He put it into action. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's Jesus Christ. That whosoever believes in him, and that includes you, and all your pain and hurt and punishment, whatever it is you've been through, that includes you. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We're not saved by works or anything we've done. We're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. And it's God's grace that allows us to be able to go to heaven. Anyway, Let's go ahead and read Matthew chapter 27, starting at verse 57. We'll probably read through 28. When evening came, a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus, he went to Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen trout and laid it in his own new tomb. When he had cut in the rock and rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite of the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remembered how this imposter said while he was still alive, After three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he had risen from the dead. And the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go and make it secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing a stone and setting a guard. Now you stop and think about the condition of, of Jesus' disciples at this point. They had seen Jesus die on the cross. Many of them did not remember, no matter how many times Jesus told them that he was going to die on the cross and rise again, they weren't thinking about that. Their hearts are broken. They think that they've lost Jesus. They think that they've lost the battle. But they, they stuck together. They stuck around. They didn't completely, completely take off. They still, they had to have a faith to bring them through. Mary and Martha, as they go to the tomb the next morning, they weren't going there to expect to see Jesus risen. They were going there to finish preparing his body. Let's read on. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. He appeared. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. For the fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel of the Lord said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come here, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb. And with fear and great joy, they ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet 
and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Now I love this because Jesus meets with them. He rises from the dead and an angel tells him, hey look, he's risen. Then, then he meets with, with the women and says, hey look, go and tell my brothers I'm going to meet with them in Galilee. And I, I love this because during this time, the word of a woman did not mean anything. They were looked down upon in that culture. But Jesus appeared to them first and said, hey, go and love my brothers now. I'm coming to see them. I've rose. There's victory. I am who I said I am. And so they, they run to go to, to Galilee. And while they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priest all that had taken place. And when they had assembled the elders, taken counsel, and they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, tell people, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, he will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And the story had been spread among the Jews to this day. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go therefore and make the disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And, you know, Matthew mentioned, hey, some of them did not believe. Some of the disciples had doubts. Of course, we read about that. I believe it's in John. Doubting Thomas said, hey, look, I want to see the, the marks in your hands and, and, and put my, my fingers in the hole in your side. And Jesus appeared to Thomas and said, here I am. See these marks in my hands? Put, put your fingers in the hole in my side. He came and showed him who he really was. But he said, hey, you only believe because you have seen. Blessed is he who believes and yet hasn't seen. Amen. And before Jesus leaves, before he ascends into heaven, he commands us to go out and make disciples of all the world to share his truth, to share his message to share his love because him dying on the cross and rising again wasn't just for the sins of people who had passed wasn't just for the sins of the people who were there it was for the sins of all it was for the sins of those who hadn't been born yet as it says in Psalm 22 and all we have to do is trust all we have to do is believe, to accept the gift that God has given us. Have a heart that's willing to change. Have a heart that's willing to believe. To let God be able to, to work in our lives. Yes, we need to be sharing this gift with others. Our forgiveness was paid for and so was theirs. Many people are out there lost and feeling hopeless and thinking that, that there's no way God could accept them, thinking that if they were to die today, they're not good enough to go to heaven. Well, let me tell you something. None of us are good enough. And Jesus died for our sins so that we may all be able to go. But it all hinges on a choice. Do you accept that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose again in three days? He is the one and only Son of God. See, it's one thing to say you believe in Jesus, that he existed. But what do you believe about Jesus? That's what's important. Do you believe he's the son of God? Do you believe he paid for your sins? If you do, you're going to have a heart that's willing to accept it, willing to follow him, a repentance heart, a heart that's willing to say, okay, Lord, my way is not working. I'm going to go your way. Let God work in your life today. 
Start that relationship with them. If you haven't, know this. Jesus paid your way. Put your trust in him today. Jesus loves you. So do I. Be blessed.